Let me be honest with you. We need a fresh emphasis on the person of the Holy Ghost. In a world that is crying out for the supernatural, there is a church that is treating the Holy Spirit as a liability instead of the power to reach the world. We need to stop limiting the Holy Spirit to special services and private meetings. We need to stop drinking and sipping from the river. And we need to jump into the river and say, Holy Ghost, have your way. The Holy Spirit wants to move. The Holy Spirit wants to speak. Will you give him a voice? Will you give him your hands? Will you give him your being? Come, Holy Spirit. Everywhere else they may say you're not welcome. Everywhere else they may treat you like you're bizarre and you're weird and you're an outcast. But not here, Holy Spirit. Not here, Holy Spirit. Here we welcome you. Lord, surge through our being. I'm so aware of him right now. I can sense him moving. Touching hearts. Church. The Holy Spirit's power cannot be replaced with programs. His miracles cannot be replaced by methods. Our systems cannot take the place of the spiritual. We need the Holy Ghost. I promise you this. To the generation that comes before me, I promise you this, never will I reject the Holy Ghost. He will be the emphasis, He will be the stirrer of the gospel. You know, when we say that we welcome the Holy Spirit, we mean it in our hearts, but you must recognize that nobody knowingly, no believer knowingly rejects the Holy Ghost. If ever somebody rejects his moving it's because they're doing it typically unknowingly so we must humbly open ourselves to the pressing question am I welcoming the Holy Ghost nobody says I don't want him I've heard preachers tell me make sure nobody's slain in the spirit you can pray for the sick but afterwards and I say, don't you want the Holy Ghost to move? And they'll say to me things like, well, and this sounds clever in their minds. They'll say, well, people are saved, aren't they? Lives are being impacted, aren't they? That means the Holy Spirit is moving. I said, yes, the Holy Spirit is moving, but you're basically telling him that after salvation, you can take it from there. Yeah, save the soul, but then don't get too weird because we'll take it from there. They want to wonder why they have to counsel so many people. You're counseling them when you need to cast the devil out of them, but you can't cast the devil out of them because you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to move. How sad that the church in many parts of the world has become a referral program instead of the source of the power of God. It's His presence, it's His power that we need now more than ever. We cannot say to the next generation, you can build it on a system. Just be relevant. Listen, I am all for modernizing things. I am all for excellence. But given the choice, you can keep your fancy haircuts, your tight jeans, your graphics, and your methods. Give me the power of God. The church is shying away from the very thing that the world is longing for. We need him now. We need him now. I want to share this thought with you. A very simple thought, and then I want to pray for you. Just a moment. Thank you, Lucas. The scripture says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. Though he was God, 
He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Jesus was truly God and truly man. But he was so much man that he stripped himself of certain divine qualities. He gave up certain powers by choice. You see, you can't kill God because he is eternity itself. <clears throat> but the reason that Jesus was able to be subject to death was because he stripped himself of that eternal nature. The scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, that it was by the Holy Spirit that the Word became flesh. I want you to think about this. An incomprehensible God of whom we receive understanding only by the Spirit became flesh. It's easier for me to explain how my iPhone works to an insect than it is for me to explain to a human the complexities of God's divine nature. And God is eternal. And God is all-powerful, and God is all-loving, yet the Holy Ghost took eternity himself and made him a man. He opened an impossibly tiny door, and the Creator stepped into creation. It was by the power of the Holy Ghost that the Word became flesh. The Scripture tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in John chapter 1, verse 14, the Scripture says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory full of grace and truth. Jesus was the fullness of the image of God. This is why He could say, If you've seen Me, you've seen the Father. The Holy Spirit missed nothing. When you look at Jesus, you see the Father. So, if Jesus stripped Himself of these divine qualities... How was it that he moved in such power? Well, the Scripture makes it clear that the Holy Spirit enabled Jesus to do many things. Isaiah 61.1 lists many things that Jesus did by the power of the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28 tells us that it was by the Holy Ghost that Jesus cast out devils. The Scripture says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that it was by the Holy Ghost that Jesus healed the sick. Jesus preached the Word, healed the brokenhearted, brought comfort to a nation, according to Isaiah 61, verse 1, by the Holy Ghost. Did you know that Jesus was even resurrected by the Holy Spirit? But I want you to really think about this. Really consider what I'm saying to you. For all of eternity, and I struggle with finding a way to word this because we're speaking in matters of eternity. For all of eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost dwelt together in a continual state of being united. Never before had they known separation until the day that Jesus was crucified. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was the separation from his Father. And Father, into your hands I commend my Spirit. That was the separation of the Spirit. And Jesus took a trust fall. And with faith in the power of the Holy Ghost, eternity himself, who had never before known death, fell backwards into the grave, trusting that the Holy Spirit would resurrect him. <laughs> Romans 1.4 tells us that's true. Romans 8.11 tells us that's true. Hebrews 5.7 tells us that's true. So if Jesus trusted the Holy Ghost, how much more can we? 
If Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, how much more do we? You see, it was by the Holy Spirit that Jesus functioned in his ministry, and he has given that power unto us. John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I'm going to be with the Father. Now, why is it, I looked at that scripture, that's John 14, 12. I looked at that scripture and I wondered, why is it that we can do greater works because Jesus goes to be with his Father? Well, you see, it was also Jesus going to his Father that caused the coming of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16, verse 7 tells us, it's best that I go away so that the Advocate can come. He's saying that greater works are possible by the Holy Spirit. This same power that rested on Jesus, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that you and I today reach our world. The Holy Spirit is the greatest evangelist of all time, convicting the hearts of men, drawing them to repentance, revealing Jesus with such vivid and intense reality that they are drawn into the splendor of his majesty. The Holy Spirit is the world's greatest church builder. He breathed upon the church in the book of Acts, and there was explosive growth even in the face of persecution and death. The Holy Spirit is the greatest healing evangelist, revealing Jesus as the healer to the one who is sick. The Holy Spirit is your counselor. He's your teacher. He's the power of the church. I was going through this in the class earlier. But do you even know who the Holy Spirit is? He's the ancient spirit, the breath at the beginning, the one who hovered above the face of the deep darkness. When God spoke, the Holy Spirit moved, and the Word with Spirit caused creation to come into existence. He's the same Holy Spirit who was in Joseph the dreamer causing him to see and fulfill all that God had for him. And I can go on and on, book by book, and tell you where he is. He inspired poetic stanzas of worship in the heart of the psalmist David. He gave wisdom to Solomon and revelation to the prophets. He gave power to the church and appointment to the disciples. And he rested upon Jesus in that same spirit. He dwells in you. But church, we need the Holy Spirit. This power, this ancient moving, this breath of God that sustains us, is calling us into the nations. This is bigger than just miracles. This is bigger than just healing. This is bringing people into the knowledge of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. That's his primary work. You want to talk about miracles, signs, and wonders. The greatest miracle is Jesus living in you. Jesus is God's clearest sign. And Jesus is the greatest wonder that ever was or ever shall be. But we need to take this power that's available to us, not by force, not by effort, not by intellect, not by systems, but by surrender. You want to know the key to the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. I'll give it to you in one word, but once you know it, you'll be ruined for any counterfeit. You want to know the key? You have to die. Listen to me, church. Nowadays, I hear a lot of preaching and a lot of it is not the gospel. Let me tell you very plainly, the gospel is not about self-help, it's about self-abandonment. We need, as the church, we need to stop trying to improve and build what God told us to crucify. He didn't say build your flesh. He didn't say get seven steps to a better flesh. He didn't say here's three keys to how to make your flesh more popular. He said crucify that flesh. Especially to my generation, I must say this. It's not about your dreams. It's about God's will. 
You know, we hear a lot of preaching about breakthrough and climbing your mountain and the fulfillment of the dream. What do we mean when we say that? The term breakthrough has come to mean the day that I have no more troubles. The day that I finally find my comfort. You want the power of God, you got to pick up your cross and you got to stay on that cross. God may not have called you to do what you're dreaming of. Can you lay it on the altar? You think of, the thing about the Holy Spirit is He has a fiery nature. And the way you keep a fire burning is you give it something to consume. Some of your fires are going out because you stopped giving Him things to consume. And you need to begin to say, Holy Spirit, I surrender. I don't want to stifle you. I need you. The first prayer that the Holy Spirit inspired me to pray, I was 11 years old when the Holy Spirit had me pray this. I said, Lord, let my hands be your hands. Heal through them. Touch through them. Work through them. Let my eyes be your eyes. I want to see things, people, and situations the way you see them. Let my ears be your ears. I want to hear your voice. Let my mouth be your mouth. I want to speak your word. Let my feet be your feet. Guide me where you want me to go. Let my being be one with your being. Let my heart beat one with your heart. Crucify my will and in its place resurrect your own. You got to die. You have to die to the flesh. You have to die to the things of this world. You have to say, Jesus, I just want you. It's very difficult to hear the voice of God when you're filling your ears with things of this world. It's very difficult to see God in a situation when you're looking at things you should not be looking at. It's very difficult for the healing power of God to move through your hands when you're touching things you shouldn't be touching. It's very difficult to walk in the will of God when you're walking in disobedience. You have to walk in the Spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need Him. But it's through surrender. It's the giving of self. Lord, crucify this flesh. God has commissioned a work of art. Jesus is the model. The Holy Spirit is the painter. And your life, when it is surrendered, becomes the blank canvas upon which the Holy Spirit can paint the image of Jesus. Enoch walked with God so closely that he was not. God, I want to be a was not. I want to be someone who just isn't. John 3.30, I must decrease, he must increase. A simple thought for you tonight. We need the power of the Holy Ghost now more than ever. We always have, we always will. And we need to surrender. You see, the reason it takes you hours to cast out demons is because you're spending seconds in prayer when you should be spending hours in prayer and only seconds casting out devils. There is no substitute for time with the Holy Spirit. All that He offers is power, is love. Romans 5.5 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We love Jesus because the Holy Spirit puts that love there. I often pray, Holy Spirit, nobody loves Jesus more than you do. Help me to love Jesus like you love Jesus. Help me to see Jesus like you see Jesus. He gives us that love. He gives us His holiness, His grace, His peace. And all those things we find simply spending time with Him. Jesus said this one thing you need, that one thing is fellowship. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 tells us that there is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 
Don't ignore him. He speaks with a gentle voice. He's not invasive, but he is pervasive. He will fill what you surrender immediately. All that he offers, all that you want to become, is found in surrendering, in spending time with him. Just be aware of him. That's it. He's so humble and gentle, that's all he asks of us. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.